Welcome to Meet the Drapers. I'm Tim Draper. This is my father, Bill Draper. My sister, Polly Draper. We are here to create the next generation of startup heroes. Every week, three heroes pitch their game-changing ideas to us. We choose one winner to move to the playoffs. Three heroes of our choice then move to the finals. But here's the big twist. You, the viewers, can invest with us in these companies. The three heroes that you fund the most will also move to the finals, where they'll battle it off for half a million dollars. The power is now in your hands. Hey, welcome back everybody to Meet the Drapers. Who knew we'd have a fourth season? Oh my gosh. Apparently there are nine million people watching this. Thank you. We're so excited. We've done something really extraordinary. We're allowing you as viewers to invest in our companies. We're gonna visit with three new companies every episode. We're gonna choose one of the winners. You're gonna help us choose. That winner will go into the semifinals and then we're gonna have a big finale. And you, the viewer, and me, a venture capitalist, are going to be investing in these companies, if they're any good. This season, we are ready. And here with me are my sister, Polly Draper, who is a famous actress, director, writer, producer of amazing movies from The Tick Code to Stella's Last Weekend. She created the Naked Brothers Band. She's producing a new movie for uh, Lifetime. All sorts of things. She's done amazing things. Polly, welcome to the show. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> great to have you and have that perspective of a great entrepreneur. And my father, Bill Draper, is also with us. Bill Draper, my father, ha is one of the pioneers of venture capital. He's funded m a multitude of companies. He's gone off to work at the UN Development Program and, to, and he ran the Export-Import Bank. He came back, he set up the first venture fund in India. He now runs DRK Foundation, the Draper Richards Kaplan Foundation, that funds Nonprofit entrepreneurs. Welcome back, Dad. Well, we've met the Drapers. Is there anything? <laughs> <laughs> but first, how has this pandemic affected all of you? Uh, normally, you're, Polly, you're over here, and Dad, you're over here, and we're all on a couch, and it's a very familial environment. Uh, now it's all on Zoom calls and very cold. The next episodes will be will be in bed <laughs> <laughs> polly how has it affected you i've been in new york which was like the epicenter of the pandemic for a while i uh, went to nevada and directed a movie there it was so freaky because um we got tested every day there was no way you could ever forget you were involved in, in a pandemic. And Dad, how have you been during the pandemic? Well, it really hasn't changed my life much at all. I, I leave the house, I go, come to the office, which is where I am now. I'll tell you how entrepreneurship has changed. We interview entrepreneurs this way, and it's a little different because we don't get their energy, their personal energy when they're in in place with us. That's been uh, fine. We've been able to interview entrepreneurs all over the world and by getting better at interviewing entrepreneurs via Zoom calls, we've actually been able to uh, look at entrepreneurs from all dif different locations and they don't have to fly all the way to the Silicon Valley to meet us. And that's a real positive for entrepreneurs. The world has changed, but people have adapted and entrepreneurs are adapting too. I've also noticed that uh, when people are stuck in place, they try new things. A lot of people brought on Bitcoin wallets. A lot of people use remote healthcare, a remote education. 
Speaking of healthcare, our other guest judge, Mireille Typhoon, is joining us today. Welcome to the show, Mireille. You're very familiar with the show. You won last season, congratulations. And Mireille is using data in healthcare in creating her P-test. Uh, Mireille, tell us how it's gone. Yes, actually, uh, people are using their P-test more during isolation. We had to, of course, uh, kill some channels like B2B, but we focused on e-commerce and business to the consumer channels, and we are growing 20 to 30% every month. So everything is working well for us for now. How have you operated during the pandemic? The whole team is working remotely, except the manufacturing part. Everything is working great thanks to all the tools we have, daily meetings in the early morning, and whole team communicates during the day. So now you're a judge. So thank you so much for joining us, and it's great to have you as a potential venture capital judge as well as being a great entrepreneur. Welcome aboard. Uh, it's great to have you here. So let's bring on our first entrepreneur, our first hero. These heroes, they take long odds at extraordinary outcomes. They make the world a better place. They're going to take us out of this pandemic and into something, a new world that we all love. Let's bring on this first entrepreneur. But before we do, let's see what's going on behind the scenes. Let's see those Draper eyebrows. <laughs> I think this is a world-changing product. We've engineered a building system that can build any building type anywhere on the planet. And this is not just about getting rich. If we are successful with this, we are gonna change lives for millions of people because the plan here is to dramatically lower housing costs for the entire world. Before I moved to Las Vegas, I lived in the Bay Area. So I spent a lot of time in San Francisco and I saw some of the horrific things that are going on there where people are living on the street in tents. And there's no, there's no reason it has to be that way. Housing should be affordable and available just like all our other modern products. One of our other co-founders, Paolo, he had built a big modular house back in Connecticut where we're from. And he just saw a crazy amount of problems and inefficiencies with building construction. So he came up with the original concept, which was to solve the shipping issues for modular houses. If you're interested in, in an impact investment and making a difference, this is it. Okay, give us your pitch. Hi guys, my name is Galliano and my company Boxable, uh, we've created the only building system that is compatible with mass production. So what's the problem here? Well, it's housing affordability and availability. This is a huge problem all around the world. Why is that? Well, it's because we're not building houses the way we're building everything else. We're building them one at a time, slowly. All our other modern products use Henry Ford assembly line principles and we mass produce them in the factory. For a bunch of reasons, uh, building construction has failed to actually move into the factory. So at Boxable, we've gone through and fixed all those problems so that we can mass produce buildings just the way we build everything else. The initial innovation that we had to get going was to fix the shipping problem because if it's too big to ship, then don't even bother building in the factory, you're gonna lose all your money shipping. So our product actually folds up to a highway legal load and then it ships uh, to site where it sets up in just an hour and everything's done. So after we solved the shipping problem, we moved on to other things to make the buildings more compatible with factory mass production. So that included uh, changing all the materials used, all the engineering, all the uh, different manufacturing processes. You can see right here our first product, the Casita. This is a 20 by 20 studio apartment that we are going to be shipping to California for $50,000. So to date, we've had a huge amount of traction. We have over a billion dollars in pre-orders. We have a large uh, government contract. And I just got back from Texas where we installed a casita for a very high profile and, and top secret customer. Uh, fundraising has been good. We just did an initial crowdfund round uh, where we did a million dollar CF round and we actually oversubscribed that round and ended up raising over four million. 
So the next step for us is a $50 million crowd offering where we will use that money to build a real assembly line style mass production factory that produces between three to 5,000 of these casitas uh, per year. As soon as that's working, we're gonna keep growing that to bring on partner factories to scale this all around the world very quickly. This is a huge opportunity. It is the last big pre-factory product that's out there. Happy to answer any of your questions. Terrific, well, thanks for coming on the show. We appreciate it. Hey, tell me, is there a bathroom in there? This one has kitchen, bathroom, HVAC, flooring, windows, doors, everything you need. It sets up in just a couple hours and you're good to go. And getting the bathroom in the kitchen and that expensive stuff done in the factory is so important because the moment you start doing that on site, the costs just explode and it becomes ridiculous. And that's why housing is unaffordable. Basically, we have a, uh, a six foot by 20 foot on this model of fixed core space where we can finish stuff in the factory. And this one is a kitchen bathroom. In another model, it could be a, a fireplace and a staircase. What, what is the price of a, um, of a fully equipped house? So our first product here, the Casita, we're going to be selling that for $50,000 delivered. And then you do have to go, go and set it up on your lot. So that's a very site specific thing. And what does it cost you to deliver? It's going to cost us less than $30,000, including uh, direct labor, overhead, raw materials in this early factory. And then when we scale, things are going to get really crazy because we're doing automobile style mass production. And they have robot arms. They're cranking out one car every 53 seconds. That's the way we should building, be building housing, not by hand, not with nails and wood. And until someone figures out how to make buildings compatible with the factory, the housing problems will continue. Uh, did you get any prepayments from the pre-orders? Out of that 1 billion pre-orders, uh, well, it's over 1 billion, about 10% have given us a deposit. And that bill, billion pre-order, that's a confidential, <laughs> that's a pretty big confidential order. I mean, is it government related or industry related? We have orders from all over the place, a billion dollars of end users who have gone on the site and reserved uh, Casita. 10% of them have paid a deposit. We also have a $10 million contract to deliver uh, 150 of these homes in 11 months to the federal government. I, I'm so confused about the plumbing. Is it like plumbing from a from a trailer home or something? How, how do they connect the pipes? Everything's done in the house, ready to connect on site. So whether you want to connect that to the grid utilities or a solar panel or a waste tank, whatever they want to do with our product, they can do it. It's ready to plug in. The back corner over there, you're going to plug in your, your power, your water, and your waste, just the way you would plug in a normal house. Are these houses going to be stackable? Are you going to be able to put one on top of the other and, and have a second floor? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, are we going to go 80 floors high? We think that the initial product should be able to be, go between five to seven stories high. And that gets you basically the bulk of the market. Our building system can actually build much more. It can build any type of building, anything from this little casita all the way up to a big uh, multifamily building with a thousand units where we stack and connect different modules together. One more question. What does your team look like? Uh, we're also kind of a family business. So we have three co-founders here, myself, Galliano Tiramani, uh, my father, Paolo, and Kyle Denman. And the three of us started working on this end of 2017. So now we've got, you know, 10 or so guys here in the office every day. We have a bunch of uh, remote people as well. And we're ready to start bringing on a bigger team as soon as we have the funding to do that. Terrific. Well, thank you so much for being on Meet the Drapers. I guess I can give you a high five to the side. And then if you do a high five, then we kind of like head there. Uh, no, I'm we're sorry, on the I'm wrong. Sorry. I, you Everyone may have to go to the other side. Maybe I go over. Hi, 10. Well done. We're going to let you go, and then we're going to talk about it.
Okay, so what did we all think? Yeah, Dad, I want to hear your opinion. He has underestimated his costs, guessing that it's going to be $30,000 and sell it for $50,000. He should have doubled or tripled the price that he's going to charge. Probably it is uh, not going to uh, make the grade of uh, being worth the price that he would have to pay for all the um, contracts that he'll have to put together to uh, make a full house. I, I'd be interesting to see to see what his bill of materials are. Um, Mireille, what did you think? Uh, I read that they have 15 patents. Maybe if they can create a successful manufacturing line, uh, they can be a potential acquisition. A big uh, construction company ca may come on board to acquire them. What do you think of him? I loved him. He was, he was so smart and so outside the box is his thinking. There is a huge trend of container houses. People basically buy an empty container and renovating it. These houses may be actually attractive because you don't have to do any labor work. Do any of that stuff, yeah. They've been prefab homes for years and years and years, but it hasn't like been mass produced. So I think what we'd be relying on is the advancement in robotics and to see whether the, that advancement has gone far enough so that you can actually set up a manufacturing line that basically creates these homes and just pounds them out. Okay, so now we gotta, we gotta vote. Are we up? Are we down? Are we sideways? Let's get our thumbs moving. This is the first time this season. Let's move those thumbs. One, two, three, boom. All right, we got one down, one sideways and two up. Good job, all right, judges, thank you. Okay, let's bring on our next entrepreneur, our next hero. Before we do, let's see what's going on behind the scenes. I grew up in construction. My dad owned a small contracting company that I worked for for a long time. I watched him get beat up and stressed out by the industry for many years. There's so many pains in the industry that small businesses, medium businesses, even the largest businesses out there go through. And as I grew up and watched my dad struggle and other companies struggle, I realized there had to be a better way. And it was a pleasure to start a construction company with my dad, that we were successful in, in that endeavor. And now we want to find a way to improve all of these issues in the industry. And construction also makes up a large percentage of the middle class blue collar workers, construction workers, moms, dads, sons, daughters. And there's just a better way for a massive industry like construction to function. And introducing blockchain to that scenario is what we think is gonna change the game and really change people's lives and change the industry for the better. All right, now let's hear from our hero with DigiBuild. Uh, go ahead, come on and give us the pitch. Hi everybody. First of all, thanks so much for the opportunity. We really appreciate it. I'm Rob Salvador, co-founder and CEO of DigiBuild. We're an enterprise software for managing construction projects and the workflows around them. And our tools are enabled by blockchain. Introducing this technology allows us to do things that are 10 times more effective than the industry leading software solutions. In total, the team behind DigiBuild has managed over 5 billion in construction jobs. And now, along with my co-founders, Ivan Franco and April Moss, we're gonna change the way the entire industry works together. It's a huge market, $10 trillion globally. 60% of the industry is moving towards digitization and software, giving us a total addressable market of $3 billion. And construction's only growing. It'll be a $22 trillion a year industry by the year 2030. DigiBuild provides a simple SaaS solution for construction project management. Utilizing blockchain, we can automate many of the administrative processes between companies. We provide new levels of transparency for risk management purposes, and we capture robust data insights that help companies with decision-making. You've got general contractors, electricians, architects, suppliers, and all of them have to send and create data back and forth between one another, and it's a huge inefficient mess. 
Our first product is for supply chain and procurement. We recently went live and we booked 6,000 MRR from six companies, including three of the biggest construction companies in the world. Since then, 15 other companies have also signed on to beta test with us. We're also running a pilot and we've created an industry standards body alongside 10 other industry leading companies. Now this is important because of that group, DigiBuild is the only one that actually builds the software, which establishes a moat around our technology and gives us an unfair advantage in scaling our solution to the industry. And with that, I'm happy to take all of your questions. Terrific. So you apparently have some um, customers already. Um, I assume those are your family. <laughs> have you tested it out? Because a lot of these construction guys don't want to bring in software and they don't want their subcontractors all tied into a system. So you'd be surprised, construction's really moved towards digitization and software recently. Uh, if you look at an average construction project, it creates about 750,000 documents between all the different parties, which is extremely difficult to manage. So most of the industry has already moved to what we call version one of software, which is moving from fax machines, emails, paper-laden processes to a cloud-based system. What's the benefit of putting this all on the blockchain? With those 750,000 documents, it's a lot of work, you know, going back to what I said about companies and people being overwhelmed. So we can automate many of these processes as opposed to it being, you know, fragmented data silos with, you know, transactions going everywhere. We can make it more like an assembly line that automates many of these things. We can also provide more transparency between the companies. Fraud is a $1 trillion a year problem in construction. So we provide that additional transparency and then capturing more robust data insight. Any questions from the rest of you? So as a B2B SaaS company, how do you acquire customers? And who is the decision maker of the sales? The industry is all about relationships. It's kind of one of those leftover things from the archaic nature of where construction used to be. And we have relationships that are second to none. We have that access, but it's really VPs, directors of technology, and then in some cases, senior project managers as well. The Enrons of the world going to want to have anything to do with this because there is so much transparency and they want to, they probably make billions of dollars in graft. Blockchain allows us to benefit all of the parties, not just one party in a transaction, but the counterparties as well. So a general, con you know, automating something for a general contractor, for example, also benefits their subcontractors because they have less work to do on their end as well. There will always be some bad actors who have dug their feet in and make money, you know, using fraudulent, you know, practices and whatnot. But in an industry that's desperate for change and desperate for margin, what we're offering is much, much bigger than that. Could you talk a little bit about your own company and how far along you are and how many deals you've done already? We do commercial construction work, uh, hotels, apartments, anything big commercial all around the country. Uh, I got into Bitcoin about five years ago and about three years ago, I really started looking at, you know, enterprise blockchain and things like that. And a light bulb just clicked that this was perfect for the way this industry is built. So we started DigiBuild. Uh, we spent the first you know, year or so kind of not building product the right way or not building enough product. Um, learned some great lessons from that. And then since then, we've been fortunate enough to lock up a partnership with IBM. I mentioned that we have six customers currently. Uh, three of them are three of the biggest in the world. Are you really going after huge construction projects or small construction projects? Using IBM, it's sort of a big company going after big thing and you don't want to be swallowed up by them. So as far as construction project size goes, you know, anything $5 million or above from a workflow perspective is considered complex and big enough for an enterprise software like this. So yeah, we're focusing on jobs between five and 50 million right now. And I know that's a, a large gap, but as I said, the construction workflows and the complexities involved in that are pretty much the same, whether it's five or 50 million. So it gives us a good, call it commercial market segment to go after. Terrific. Well, thank you so much for coming to meet the Drapers. We appreciate your coming on the show. Uh, give you a high five. I like your Bitcoin tie. Oh my gosh. Look at that. I had to do that for you, Tim. That is really <laughs> impressive. Look at that. If you flip mine, though, it's from, from the Amador Valley High School. What's, what's on the back of yours? Oh, yours is probably nicer than mine, but hey. <laughs>
Thanks so much for being on Meet the Drapers. High five. High five this way. High, high 10. Raise the roof. All right. Great, great to have you on the show. Thanks. So uh, what did you all think of DigiBuild? I like him. I like his approach. Uh, I wasn't sure. He glanced over his team pretty quick. Uh, I'd like to meet others in the team. I love the idea. I mean, the idea that they can consolidate all the little annoying, niggling details of construction and the fact that the transparency aspect of it to me was fantastic too. I really like the team, as Polly said. They will, whatever happens, maybe the business model will fail, it will fail again, uh, but I think they will make it true because their meeting stories are really uh, authentic. Uh, they're obviously good friends and they gave their hearts to this business. They gave up their jobs. I think that's a lot of commitment for $6,000 MRR. So uh, there is a huge, um, I think, success story can come out from this interesting team. We've seen several companies like this that um, are trying to consolidate that business, trying to make it so that it's more transparent and open. Um, this is the first one I've seen that uses the blockchain, so that's it, very exciting. Okay, so let's vote. Okay, thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs all around. Which way are we going on this one? Boom. Okay, I'm sort of three quarters up. I'm concerned about competition. I'm not seeing your thumb, Polly. Oh, Bring it up I'm closer to, get... to your face. Up. Okay, Mine's we've up. got a we've got a sideways to down from Mireille. We have an up from Dad. I'm I'm sort of three quarters up, and Polly, you were up. Great. Okay, so we've we've seen two. Now let's see our third entrepreneurial hero. But before we do, let's see what's going on behind the scenes. What comes to your mind when you think about security? Security guards aimlessly walking or driving around, agents staring blankly at video screens. And studies show that after 12 minutes, you miss 45% of the activity. So I was actually working at a computer vision startup when unfortunately our garage was broken into. I felt very violated. Uh, I'm sure you can all relate to that. I went to the police and asked them like, hey, what's happening? How is this possible in a very secure area like you know Silicon Valley? And he said, oh, with all these cameras, nobody has time or patience to watch them. And the burglars know it. That's why they don't care and they just do it. That was a light bulb moment for me. I said, hey, I know how to solve this by applying the latest advances in computer vision to solve this problem where I can address the safety and security of people by using this AI. All right, so let's hear from our next entrepreneur from Sentry. Uh, give us your pitch. I'm Uday Kiran Chaka. I'm the founder and CEO of Sentry AI. So we are a business to business software as a services company using artificial intelligence to improve the safety and security of businesses. We connect security cameras with cutting edge artificial uh, intelligence uh, technologies to build virtual sentries, eliminating the need to view 90% of the security videos, resulting in significant operational savings and more importantly, 10 times improvement in identifying security risks. But our secret sauce is having this team collaborate with police officers and security experts to build AI that thinks like a security guard and more. 
and this is not easy as uh, as it appears to be right uh, because it has to work night and day and even when the visibility is poor due to rain or snow and it has to use very little data we infer a lot of information from just images instead of the full video we designed sentry ai to think like a human and tirelessly protect 24 by 7 without losing attention and learn continuously security monitoring is a very large market 150 billion dollars and it is being disrupted by ai powered video analytics which is growing very rapidly and sentry has the best ai powered video analytics product our base product intrusion detection outperforms everything else in the market in terms of accuracy and our proactive monitoring product prevents crime by recognizing people and unauthorized vehicles our signature product p safety ensures people well being by detecting fallen person violence stalking and any new needs like mass compliance we processed 170 million images from 25000 security cameras and deployed in 37 countries covering offices construction sites small businesses and universities terrific so tell me can this completely replace the security guard and then who who gets the alert if uh, if the ai sees something go wrong so we don't intend to replace the security guards completely uh, we want this to be a tool to help them focus most of the time they're looking at something and they lose focus so what we do is eliminate a lot of this filter a lot of this so that they can pay attention to only the events that we surface for them so in that sense it's a great assistant aid to the security personnel how do you charge for this is it a, a saas product or is it uh, you charge per incident or how, how does it work yeah it is a saas product we charge uh, approximately 30 dollars per camera per month and uh, we have a suite of uh, features that we charge independently if it requires any custom development what is it you really supply pure software it works with existing uh, cameras existing video management systems we sit on top and filter the video before it goes to any human so today all this video and lot of motion alerts and you would be surprised to see some of them send thousands of alerts per day completely you know overwhelming security guards or operators in a monitoring station and what sentry ai does is to filter this you know almost to 95% range so that they have to see only a few and especially those that are outliers that are unusual from whatever is normal for that particular camera or for that particular site how many dollars uh have you collected from your customers we uh, started with our home product and we have 1200 paid customers there and four months ago we started our uh, business product and we already signed up five b2b customers and we have about six uh, pilots in progress today where did you see the biggest interest hospitals um schools malls and i have another question that is like what is what is what is creating an alert and what is not creating an alert like what is your ai's difference compared to other softwares that's what i wanted to know the biggest interest actually is coming from university campuses who have the security guards who are walking around and they just don't know where to go and when they have 100 cameras it's very difficult for them to pay attention so they are actually finding a lot of value in our ai filtering and telling them where to go so that's one area where we are getting a lot of interest and there are a lot of security dealers today who use monitoring centers and they would like this filtration before they send alerts to the uh, monitoring center so the alerts we send typically are around intrusion so a person is entering a restricted area or at a time where they're not supposed to be present and we have alerts similarly for vehicles as well and because we recognize whether it's a staff or a, a an unknown person we can actually ignore the alert and this is as important as sending an alert we ignore the alert when there is a trusted member and what happens is it a sound is it a flashing light what happens you get it on your watch what how do you how do you know 
So Sentry AI, actually we are very uh, open API and we integrate with uh, a desktop portal where they can actually see the alerts if they're monitoring it continuously. Uh, we send a mobile alert directly to the phone telling, hey, uh, something happening is strange, please pay attention. And it can be connected to any of these alarm systems where you can have the flashing alarms, you know, blazing lights, everything is very easy to configure with our APIs. Thank you so much for joining us on Meet the Drapers. Uh, give me a high five, high five, or th there you go, high five. We'll let you know and, uh, and keep going, keep doing what you're doing, it sounds great. We, we really appreciate you heroes. So what did we all think of Sentry AI? Dad, do you have a point of view there? I, I, I liked it, uh, his presentation. I liked his energy. I loved him and also I, I think that this is a, the fact that he can, it can be used with anybody's cameras and anybody's setup is a huge plus because of the other ones he, that are his competition, they have to reinstall everything. They, they do it all. They, they reinstall everything. At least that's what I gathered. Mireille, what did you think? So I think it's a data game. Like whoever, whoever has the more data from the past will win this AI ga game uh, when it comes to security. So I wish them good luck, but I think there's a lot of competition. When I asked, why are you doing this? He said, Oh, I got violated. I, I was so upset and I, and I have this AI background and I felt like I had to do something. Um, I like that. So now we, we go thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs all around. How do you come out on Sentry AI? Okay, I'm at three quarters also. Oh, pretty much all the way across. It's three quarters all the way across. Um, no, I'm, I'm thumbs all the way. Oh, you're thumbs up, and so is Dad. All the way too. It's just a crooked thumb. <laughs> I can't. I'm not sure which way to go. Terrific. So we've seen uh, we've seen three great companies this week. We're really excited about what we've just seen. I'm I'm going to have a very difficult time choosing which one, so I'm glad I'm gonna be able to relate to my crystal ball. I'm thinking we should have a discussion about all three and which one we like the best. So today, we have seen Boxable, DigiBuild, and Sentry. Dad, what was your favorite? It was a bit of a tie, but I, I, I liked uh, the last one. Uh, the AI one. Polly, what do you uh, what do you think? Since I don't really understand the markets for everything, it's it's actually hard for me to choose because all three of them have something very strong to offer. So I would choose from the people I like best, and I loved the last guy so much, the AI guy. Marie, who did you choose? Uh, I think I think I'm going to choose DigiBuild because it's a huge market. Construction is one of the biggest markets. And if they can even uh, target a small portion of it, they can make a difference in the market. Yeah, I, I was really torn on these three too. Let's bring in those entrepreneurs. Let's see what we got. So thank you so much for joining us on Meet the Drapers. It was great having you on the show. We were really impressed all the way across, and this was one of the toughest decisions that we've made with Boxable. Uh, we're very excited about the idea of creating low-cost housing. We certainly need that in San Francisco. I know they need it in Austin, Texas. They need it in a lot of places around the world. And if you can somehow automate that and you can 
turn it into a, a big factory that just pounds out houses. We think that that could be really extraordinary, but we think it's also very capital intensive, and we think that it, um, you may not hit the cost numbers that you think you're gonna hit. DigiBuild, we're very excited about what you're doing. We think that that has the potential to change all construction, where we're gonna be in a position where these buildings actually get built on time and on budget, and, uh, and using the blockchain to do it is a very clever uh, approach. There is always some concern that these customers are a little tougher to get, get your hands on and tougher to get them to, to sign up to. Sentry, we're, we're very excited about making it a lot easier for people to identify when there is a, a security breach somewhere. But on the other hand, we don't know if this is gonna actually replace all of those security guys, and that's what's the $280 billion market. So a little bit of a concern about the market size. As entrepreneurs, I loved all of your enthusiasm. I loved how well trained you are. You've clearly given your pitches before. Uh, you are definitely ready for funding, all of you. And so I hope that our crowd fills up your crowdfunding in all three cases. We've talked amongst ourselves and we now have to consult the crystal ball. Beanie, beanie, chili, beanie, weenie, sini, beanie. The winner is Sentry. Sentry AI, you are the winner. You move ahead. Ah, and we've got the Sentry. The Sentry AI uh, spawn. The other two of you, you have an opportunity to move ahead also if you are the biggest crowd funded, but Sentry AI, you are moving to the semifinals. Congratulations. Thanks to all of you for joining us and thanks to all the viewers. I'd love to be back on the show and, and get in front of more people so more people can find out about what we're doing and why it's gonna change the world. Maybe we could do something even even better next time, like like a live demonstration of the house unfolding or being set up, uh, because we can do that here in the warehouse pretty easily. In general, the industry is saying that this is something that can really change the industry. And you know, investors try to hit a home run. And at the end of the day, you know, using a new technology in an industry that that is desperate, to us, that's a real opportunity to hit a home run. So we hope we get the opportunity from the viewers to go back and you know get in front of Tim and the team again. And, but either way, we're excited for the opportunity and hopefully we can get uh, some momentum from the crowd and the viewers out there. This uh, win is, is a catalyst for us, uh, for the whole team that's working so hard. Uh, it's gonna give a great boost for them to continue that hard work and make sure our product reaches each and every home, business, and a public place. Okay, see you next week on... Business Drapers! We're funding Fun along the way, we'll change the world.